What if the serpent was telling the truth? You've heard the creation story, but not like this. This is Genesis from Adam's perspective. In the band gospel, the apocalypse of Adam, Adam teaches his son Seth about the nature of reality, the upcoming flood, and the truth about his time in Eden with Eve. The apocalypse of Adam is a counter-narrative to the traditional Genesis story, which the Gnostics believed was a direct inversion of the truth. Remember that the individuals who wrote the books in the canon are the same people who control this planet. They worship evil, including the creator god of the Bible. So, of course, they painted him in a positive light and glossed over the many terrible acts that he committed. But Adam and Eve were wise. They rebelled against God and the apocalypse of Adam is written from the rebel's perspective. Adam explains that God is an imposter who created humanity to be his slaves. The Gnostics called him Yaldabaoth. And there is a way for humanity to escape. According to the Apocalypse of Adam, Adam and Eve were powerful, more powerful than God. In Gnosticism, the true God was a perfect entity called the Monad. And one of the Monad's many divine expressions was a powerful human being. This makes humanity higher than the imposter God in the Bible who has absolutely no connection to love, compassion or the divine. Yaldabaoth, the lord of this world of matter, is a jealous god who was enraged at the fact that humanity is more powerful than him. So, as punishment, he trapped the perfect human in the prison of the physical body, split it into two parts, the masculine and the feminine, threw it down into the material world and then wiped their memories so that they would forget who they really are. He then tricked humanity into believing that it was the one true God. Yaldabaoth demands unquestioning faith and constant worship, all while making humanity his slaves. The Gnostics refer to this trap as the two tombs the tomb of the physical body and the tomb of the material world. Yaldabaoth then places Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to be his slaves. But the Gnostic Eden is nothing like the paradise described in the Bible. It was a prison. As I'm sure you know, there are two trees planted inside the Garden of Eden. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge. Adam and Eve can eat from any tree except from the tree of knowledge. Did anybody else wonder why God would forbid knowledge?